everyone. You'll be pleased to know that we're on the home stretch now for this module. For today's dot point, we're going to use what we've learned so far so that we can understand and identify the broad range of temperatures over which life is found compared with the narrow limits for individual species. In simpler terms, we're going to start looking at animals and how everything we've learned so far about homeostasis applies to them. There will also be a lot of talk about polar bears in this video, so look forward to that. Now, there are two sections based on this dot point. Firstly, we have to recognise that there is a broad range of temperatures for life. This means that we can find life in a very broad temperature range, from the cold freezing temperatures in the Arctic and Antarctic to the very hot weather present in the tropics, it is possible to find life. Secondly, we need to understand that there are narrow limits for individual species. Some animals like polar bears love the freezing Arctic cold, while other organisms, such as a cat, will be up Struggle Street in those temperatures. We'll look at some of the scientific explanations for why that is. To start off, we'll skip the first section for now and focus on the narrow limits for individual species first. The reason why there is a narrow limit for individual species to exist is because of our enzymes. We've talked enough about enzymes that you should know all there is to know about enzymes. But in case you somehow forgot, enzymes are important biochemical catalysts that need specific conditions to work properly. The way to ensure these specific conditions is through homeostasis. Quick recap of homeostasis. It is the process by which organisms maintain a relatively stable internal environment. Things like temperature, substrate concentration and pH must be kept constant and maintained or things will be like that cat in the Arctic. Not good. For this video, the narrow limit we're going to focus on is temperature. Whilst it would be great if humans could walk around the Antarctica in shorts without fear of hypothermia, we need to live in an environment where the temperature does not deviate or change too much. A common question is that if homeostasis is a process that ensures a relatively stable internal environment, then why is it that humans can only live in a narrow range? When other organisms undergo homeostasis, such as wombats or kangaroos, why can they only live in a narrow range when their internal environment is constantly maintained despite changes in their external environment? First off, that is a great question. Secondly, we'll try to answer it today. Let's start off by having a look at the narrow limits for humans. On paper, we can live anywhere between 0 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius without the use of technology or extra clothing. Other than a birthday suit, we're going to completely ignore instances of humans using extra clothing and technology for the purposes of this question. Although homeostasis allows the body temperature to cool down in hot environments, prolonged exposure in the heat can result in heat exhaustion, which can lead to hypothermia. This is when the body gains heat at a quicker rate than it can lose heat, and body temperature will continue to increase above the normal range. Whilst homeostasis removes heat from the body when you are overheating, there is a point when there is too much heat, and it is not leaving the body as quickly as it is entering. The body's constant internal temperature will not be maintained, and that's when you'll feel like rubbish. The same thing happens with cold temperatures, which can lead to hypothermia. This is when the body loses heat at a quicker rate than it can gain heat. Although homeostasis can try to minimise heat loss, if the body is losing too much heat, then homeostasis won't be possible. Symptoms of hypothermia include exhaustion, slow and weak pulse, and loss of coordination. This is why, although we can undergo homeostasis, humans can only live in this narrow range between 0 to 45 degrees Celsius, with 25 degrees being the optimal temperature. Since humans are so fragile, let's have a look at something that can survive in much colder ranges, polar bears. Polar bears can live from negative 30 degrees to 5 degrees Celsius. So whilst polar bears would survive comfortably at around negative 10 degrees Celsius, this is still a narrow limit. Bringing a polar bear to somewhere like Australia without a whole lot of ice and snow would be like playing tennis with a fly swatter. You're not going to last very long. Last but not least, let's have a look at organisms that thrive in very hot temperatures. 
organisms that prefer places with really high temperatures are called thermophiles. Thermophilic bacteria is a good example of a thermophile as it can survive at temperatures ranging from 60 to 120 degrees Celsius. This puts thermophiles on the far right end of our very simple graph of narrow limits. Should polar bears, humans or thermophiles deviate from their range too much, they compromise homeostasis. Their enzymes won't function properly and it'll be painful for everyone or thing involved. Now that we've covered narrow limits for life using polar bears, humans and invisible heat resistant bacteria, it's time to look at the very first concept. There is a broad range of temperatures over which life is found. Although humans, polar bears and thermophiles have narrow limits, if we put them together on a chart, we can see that life on Earth can be found from one extremity to the other extreme. This is why regardless of it being freezing cold or boiling hot, life can be found over a large, broad range of temperatures. In saying that though, this temperature range differs on land and underwater. Temperatures will vary more on land, hence why terrestrial organisms will experience a greater daily seasonal temperature range. Since colder and hotter temperatures are more apparent on land, there is a broader range of temperatures and can range from minus 90 degrees to 56 degrees. In the complete opposite to land, since temperatures vary less in water, there is a similar temperature range underwater. Just to throw in an interesting fact, the Antarctic Ocean ranges from minus 2 degrees Celsius at shallow coastal waters to around 38 degrees in the tropics. Regardless of these wild temperature fluctuations, there are always living organisms on land or underwater that live on both ends of the extremities, with many flourishing around in the middle. So regardless of land and water, life on Earth is found over a large, broad range of temperatures. And on that note, we've reached the end. Before we finish up, let's quickly revise what we've learnt today so that we can understand where we stand on survivability in relation to polar bears and bacteria. Firstly, individuals can only survive within a narrow range. This is because enzymes require specific conditions in order to maximise function and metabolic rate. Whilst homeostasis allows a relatively stable internal environment to be achieved due to adaptions like behavioural, physiological or structural adaptations, homeostasis is next to useless in extreme climate conditions. Life is found over a broad range of temperatures. Polar bears, humans and thermophiles all live in different narrow temperature ranges. However, they are merely three examples of the broad range of temperatures that life can exist in. Lastly, the temperatures will vary more on land than they do in water.